Lesson 2.2c, using integer division to solve word problems. We can use integer division to solve real world problems. For some problems, we may need to perform more than one step. We should make sure that the sign of the quotient makes sense for the situation. So remember in word problems, there's going to be clue words. We'll see clue words that tell us whether we're dealing with a negative integer or a positive integer. The negative integer clue words could be like penalty, loses or lost, find, charged, withdrew, spent, decrease, and the positive ones can be gained, deposit, earn, climb, increase, or rise. We can use an inequality symbol to compare quantities. We can use less than, greater than, is equal to, to compare quantities for our word problem. So, the steps to solving word problems are, we read the problem carefully to understand what we need to find, we can highlight, circle, or note the important information given and look for clue words. Then we decide how to use that information by choosing a strategy. Are we going to write an equation? Are we going to act it out with a model, look for a pattern, solve a simpler version of the problem? Are we going to draw a picture or diagram or table to help us? Maybe we can work backwards or break the problem into small parts. So this word problem says, in the first level of a video game, two points are deducted for each time a character falls. In the second level, each fall deducts five points. Well, Sam lost 12 points in the first level and 25 points in the second level. In which level did Sam's character fall more? So we see that in the first level, it's two points are deducted each time a character falls. In the second level, it deducts five points. We know that Sam lost 12 points in the first level and 25 points in the second level. And we need to figure out which level Sam's character fell more. So think. Points deducted is negative, and lost 12 points is negative. He lost them. We can divide his lost points by the deducted points separately for each level and compare them. For level 1, we have negative 12 divided by negative 2. Well, we have like signs. They make a positive quotient, so 12 divided by 2 is 6. It's a positive 6. For level 2, we have a negative 25 because he lost 25 points in the second level, and it's divided by negative 5 because the second level deducts 5 points. We have like signs. They make a positive quotient, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. It's a positive 5. Now we can write them with an inequality symbol. 6 is greater than 5 to compare them. The question was, in which level did Sam's character fall more? Well. He fell more in level 1 because that's a 6, and 6 is greater than 5. So the penalty for falling in level 1 is negative 2 points, and the penalty for falling in the second level is negative 5 points. Bob had penalties totaling negative 10 points in the first level and negative 25 points in the second level. In which level did Bob receive more penalties? We can do the negative 10 for the first level that he got and divide it by the negative 2 points that he loses for the first level. We have like signs. They're going to produce a positive quotient. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. We have a positive 5. For level 2, he's got negative 25 points, and they're each taking away 5 points, so that's a negative 5. We have like signs, so it's going to produce a positive quotient, and 25 divided by 5 is 5, it's a positive 5. So in which level did Bob receive more penalties? Neither. Bob received the same number of penalties in each level. 5 is equal to 5. Here's another problem. 
Jim's savings changed by negative $12 each time he went to see a movie at the theater. In all, it changed by negative $84 during the summer. How many times did Jim go to the movie theater in the summer? We think we can divide the total amount he spent by the amount he spent each time to find the number of times he went. Negative 84 divided by negative 12, whatever that quotient is, is going to tell us how many times he went to the movies. We can do a related multiplication equation to help us. We have negative 12 times some number is going to equal negative 84. And this missing factor must be positive for the product to be negative. These need to be unlike factors. We think, well, 12 times 7 is equal to 84. And this 7 is going to be our quotient, and it's got to be a positive 7. We have like signs in our division problem. We know that Bob went 7 times to the movies. A tenant, that's a renter, of an apartment made three of their rent payments late and was fined three late fees. The total change to their bank account for the late fees was negative $75. How much was each late fee? So we think we can divide the total change to their account by the number of late fees they were fined. We have negative 75 divided by the three late fees. And we can write a related multiplication equation, or we can divide their absolute values. We have 75 divided by 3. That's 25. We have unlike signs. Unlike signs produce a negative quotient. We have negative $25 was charged to the account. That means each late fee was $25. This word problem says, Tala received negative 15 points on an exam. She got three questions wrong out of 100 questions. How much was Tala penalized for each wrong answer? Penalized means punished. So what they're asking is how much did she lose for each wrong answer? And we think we can divide the number of points she lost by the number she got wrong and if you look here, it says out of 100 questions. That 100 questions is unnecessary information. We don't need that. All we need to know is how many points she lost and how many questions she got wrong. This is completely unimportant. So we have a negative 15 divided by 3 is equal to some number. We can write a related multiplication sentence or we can use absolute values. For absolute values, the absolute value of negative 15 is 15, and the absolute value of 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. We see they have unlike signs that will produce a negative. That means we have a negative 5. That means Tala was penalized 5 points for each wrong answer. Remember that division can also be written by using a fraction bar. Integers are a subset, a small set, within a set of rational numbers and can be written as a quotient of two integers. So it can be written as a fraction, negative 75 divided by negative 3. This is the dividend. This is the divisor. This is the dividend. This is the divisor. And remember, if the divisor is 0, the division is undefined. If the dividend is zero, the quotient is zero. So this is what I meant by integers are a subset of rational numbers. We have our littlest fish here. That's the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Whole numbers include the natural numbers and the number zero. And you can remember whole numbers include zero because there's like an O and it looks like a zero, whole numbers. Integers, which are a subset of rational numbers, are the negative and positive whole numbers, and they include whole numbers and natural numbers. Rational numbers are fractions and decimals, so they include integers. Integers are a subset of rational numbers, and so they can be written as a quotient of two integers.
Rational numbers can. And real numbers are irrational numbers and all of these other ones in that one big fish. It includes all of these. Maybe you can take a screenshot of my fish to help you remember. We're now finished with lesson 2.2. We're going to move on to 2.3a using the order of operations with integers. Have a wonderful day. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.